Hey guys, welcome back once again. In today's session, we're going to discuss about the chapter number one, that is the data types and percentages. This is the part of statistics MSAT achieve math test. Previously, we discussed about the geometry and before that we already completed the algebra as well. Please find the link given in the description box below to find the all the concepts related with the geometry, algebras and all. And you can also subscribe to my channel so that whenever I upload a new video, you will be notified. So let's start with the first chapter in the statistics today that is data types and percentage. So when I'm saying statistics, it's mainly working on the data, calculate the percentage and other concepts they come, we're going to discuss out later. So here are the few of the sample questions. I have taken it from the MSAT sample papers. The first question here says, in nature, biological growth is modeled using the exponential equations to determine the population density of a certain type of non-native plant, the number of plants N in an area, of, uh, area at a time T where A and B are constants is modeled by the function. This is the function given used to calculate the number of uh, population density of a certain types of plants, non-native plants. They are what they are describing. Referring to this question says, the table shows the two values of the functions for the certain non-native plants. So the table shows that when the value of T as zero, N of T 150 means at the beginning, there were like, you know, 150 non-native plants. So that is the meaning of at the time of t equals to 1, they are 450. Maybe after one day, whatever the time units they are not using, I think your time, just they mention it as a time. So after the t, uh, like 1, maybe 1 hour, maybe 1 day, 1 month, like whatever the units they say, it is 450. Now question says, which equation can be used to find the number of plants in an area at a time t? They're asking us, based on this information, which option should I use to find the, uh, like, you know, the number of population density at the time t? This is simply like, you know, substitution type questions. So what I can observe here is, you just look at the, the way how it has given. When you substitute the value of t as 0 in the options, you should get answer as 150. Look at out which are the options can give you. So when you substitute the value of t as 0, so here, 450 times 3 to the power 0. We know that any number to the power 0, regardless of whatever that number, any number to the power 0 is 1. So that is 450 multiplied by 1 that gives us 450. Then this is not the choice. Look at here again. 450 times 1 to the power 0. Again, it gives us 450. This is not the choice. Probably this might be the answer. Let's take uh, like you know 150 times 1 to the power 0 that gives us 150 probably this is the answer or here 150 times 3 to the power 0 this also gives the initial value as 150 now answer may be either this one or this now I have two options so then I have to check out the next part when you substitute the value of t as 1 you should get answer as 450 so when you substitute t value as 1 here 150 times 1 to the power 1 still it gives us 150 only then this is cannot be the answer then definitely this is the choice so when you substitute the t value as 1 150 multiplied by 3 to the power 1 which is 150 times 3 which gives us the value of 450 and that is matching with the table so right answer to this question is like the last option question number two says at the beginning of a study a certain culture of bacteria is predicted to be increased. A sample of 3000 bacteria is uh, selected from this population reached the size of 3132 bacteria in two hours. So this is the initial number of bacteria. So generally we write it as A0 is the initial value that is uh, 3000. After the time of two hours, T is equals to two. The uh, final value of that bacteria A is equals to 3132. Now question says, find the hourly growth rate. And the equation they have given us is A is equals to A0 times E to the power R times T. So this formula will be given to you in the data sheet of the MSAT test. Just you need to use it. 
so they are asking us find the growth hourly growth rate so they are asking indirectly the value of t and what a is representing a0 is representing r they are representing everything has included okay so it's just a calculator type so you just need to substitute in the calculator so what are those values that's going to be 3000 i'm replacing a with the 3132 equal to initial value that is 3000 times e to the power r value which is we don't know multiply with what is the value of t 2 so just take help of calculator how we generally solve the algebraic equation by shift solve equal that with that one you will be able to get answer for it so just use it as let me type that equation as it is in the calculator so 3132 equals for equal we press alpha cal then equal to 3000 times what is the value of e shift e to the power what it is for r we put it as x alpha x times the time here is gonna be 2 once you done with that press shift calc equal you'll be getting that value of x as that is r as 0 0.021 so you'll be getting it as r value here it as 0 0.021 yeah, 0 0.021521521 something question ask is round your answer to the nearest hundreds and they are asking us to like round this value to the nearest hundreds and you can look at that answer key what they have given to us is that like round it in terms of percentage so first we need to convert this into percentage how do we convert number to percentage by multiplying by 100 first convert into percentage why i am saying so because the option has included a value to be in percentage this answer whatever we got 0 0.02152 0 0.02152 times by 100 that is 2.152 percent so it's gonna be 2.152 percent and question says round your answer to nearest 100 so what is the hundredth place this is the tens place and this is the hundreds place after the hundreds place if next number is five or above you add one to the hundreds place digit but if the next number is lesser than five you just keep it as 2.12 itself so answer to this question is 2.1 sorry 2.15 percent not two okay that's what they asked it's simply a calculator part substitute that values in the calculator and arrange it accordingly Question number three says here, a dress on sale in a shop is marked D dollar. During the discount sale, its price is reduced by 15%. Staff are allowed a further 10% reduction on the discounted price. If a staff member buys the dress, what will she have to pay in terms of D? If the staff member wants to buy that uh, uh, sh uh, like uh, sale, what amount is she supposed to pay? That's the question. This is basically a percentage type and these kind of questions are very common in exam. So whenever they use the word, let me tell you the general word, when they use the word offer, discount, and off price something, offer, discount, off, you just need to do subtract, subtract, percent of value, percent of value from actual value i just use this rule here actual value when they say discount of offer subtract the percent of value from the actual value and when they say pay a tax vat or something you have to add percent of value to the actual amount so let's work it out address on sale in the shop marked price is this during this the discount sale its price reduces by 15 percent now what will be the price after 15 percent discount that is discounted price i must say discounted price will be whatever the price d dollar minus 15 percent of that amount d dollar because you are reducing this much percent of that amount so d dollar minus 15 percent of d dollar that is 15 percent is 0.15 and if you take it as 
the like you know a d dollar as a factor out you left with one minus 15 percent can be written as 0 0.15 or you can just put it in the calculator like this just to put the number inside it you can do it as one minus 15 percent that that works it becomes 0 0.85 so 0 0.85 times the amount it will be having the current price now. This is the discount 0 0.85. This is the discounted price. Now, if a staff member wants to purchase, that person will be getting 10% discount on this amount, additional 10% discount. So now additional 10% further discount, we can also do it as this amount that is 0 0.85 times the dollars minus 10 percent on this price that is 0 0.85 d so if you take again 0 0.85 d as a common factor it becomes the coefficient of nothing as written means the coefficient of this one is 1 minus 10 percent by the way we are just doing it like i'll tell you the shortcut at the end we can do it like 1 minus 10 percent what we are getting 0 0.9 this value i'm getting it as 0 0.85 times d this value we are getting it as 0 0.9 so now put it all together in the calculator and see what option you get 0 0.85 times 0 0.9 that is 0 0.765 times the d 0 0.765 times the d that i go with option c this is what I'm doing in a longer way. So, but you can also do it like, you know, very quick. And like, you know, if you understand very well about the percentage. So what I'm going to do here is see alternate way I'm talking about. What amount the person supposed to pay? First is the D, D dollar is the price. They are providing you 15% discount. When we say 15% discount, it means they are charging just 85% of the total amount. 15% discount meaning they are charging you only the 85% of the whatever the value they had. So I just calculated as 85% of the total amount is the discounted price. On this price, a salesperson will get an additional 10% discount. That means for the salesperson, they are charging only 90% of the amount what we got after discount. So just I'll be saying they are charging only 90% of the value, whatever they we got after discount. The same thing what I have written um, uh, by subtracting all, I'm just writing in another way. So whatever the amount you're going to get, just multiply 85% times 90% of that value will be the answer. 85% times 90% of that value will be what we'll be getting again 0 0.765 this is going to be 0 0.765 of the total amount is the price after discount to the sale pe person this is how the questions can be asked on the multiple usage of the percentage and these kind of questions are common in the exam let's do the last question again this is based on the percentage it says last year abbas invested his money in two purchases he purchased a certificate of deposit for 15,000 dirhams that paid 5% interest per year and purchased 5,000 in corporate bonds paying 6% interest per year. What is the total interest earned at the end of the year? Question is about what is the total interest earned at the end of the year? So they are asking us what is the total interest earned at the end of the year so just calculate the what interest abbas earned from the fifteen thousand dollar uh, dirhams at the five percent interest rate and what interest he earns from the five thousand dirhams at the six percent interest rate so how do we calculate that fifteen thousand times the five percent that gets the give us the interest what he earns on this amount plus five thousand multiply with 6% that gives the interest what he get on the 5000 dirhams. So that is the total interest what he earns after one year. So question is asked only about the interest. Okay, so then we're going to go with simply 15,000 times 5% of that value 
plus 5000 times 6%. 6% of that value, we'll be getting it as 1050. So 1050 is the total amount what Abbas earned just as an interest. But if they ask you, what is the total amount he will be getting return after one year, then we have to count his initial deposits. I'm talking about the different question. The question here asked us about the interest only. This is the right answer. But in exam, they might also ask you, what is the total amount Abbas can get after one year? So this is the amount he gained as an interest plus whatever he has deposited, 15,000 plus 5,000, including those plus 1050 will be the total what he will be getting. So these are the possible type of questions what you get on the percentages. These are not limited to. I just give you some brief introduction about, but there are a lot of varieties questions can be asked. Make sure that you have a complete understanding of percentages. All right. So that's it for the today's lesson. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel so that whenever I upload a new video, you will be notified. All right. Thank you so much. All the best.